The sex patriarch S. Dog Majuro Platform Sutra. The sex patriarch S. Dog Majuro Platform Sutra. With the commentary of Tripitaka Master What. English translation by the Buddhist Text Translation Society. Buddhist Text Translation Society. Dharma Realm Buddhist University. Dharma Realm Buddhist Association. Berlin Gate, California, USA. The Sixth Patriarch as Dharma Jewel Platform Sutra. Published and translated by Buddhist Text Translation Society. 1,777 Murchison Drive, Berlin Gate, CA 九四零一零四五零四。Copyright 两千零一 Buddhist Text Translation Society. Dharma Realm Buddhist University. Dharma Realm Buddhist Association. First edition, Hong Kong, 1971. Second edition, USA, 1977. Third edition, USA, 2001.11109080706050403021098765432. ISBN 零年八月八一三九。三一六转九 ，Printed in Malaysia. Addresses of the Dharma Realm Buddhist Association branches are listed at the back of this book. Library of Congress cataloging in publication data. Huiman 六三八七一三。Lanzu Tashi Prabhu Tenji. English. The Sixth Patriarch S. Dharma Jiro Platform Sutra with the commentary of Venerable Master Suman Wat English translation by the Buddhist Text Translation Society. P. Gopan. In Buddhist Index. Originally published, San Francisco, Sino American Buddhist Association, 1977. ISBN 零年八月八一三九三一六转九 Al Paper. E. Zen Buddhism, Early Works to 1800. I soon what 一千九百零八。二。Soon what 一千九百零八。Like you thought I would tell you she and she. English. 三。Buddhist Text Translation Society. 四。Title. B Q 九千两百九十九 H 八百五十四 L 六十一万三千两百二两百九十四点三八十五 C 二百一十两亿零一十万三千七百四十五零。The A Guidelines of B T T S 七 Editor S Introduction 十。Biography of the Venerable Master Shi Tzu. Tripitaka Master Huat S. Introduction XXI. Translator S. Introduction XXII. Reviewer S. Preface XXVI. Forward E. Introduction 3. The five previous Chinese patriarchs. Nine. A general introduction. Thirty-one. 
Chapter I Action and Intention. 五十一 Chapter 二 Prajna. 一百一十五 Chapter 三 Doubts and Questions. 一百六十九 Chapter 四 Concentration and Wisdom. 两百零三 Chapter V Setting in Chapter Ten. 两百一十七 Chapter V Repentance and Reform. 两百二十一 Chapter V Opportunities and Conditions. 两百六十一 Hipshipahai. 两百六十六 Hipshupa T A. 两百六十九 Hipshupa T B. 两百八十四 Hipshupa T Chapter A. 两百九十二 Contents. Hipshupa T B. 两百九十九 Hipshupa T C. 三百零九 Hi, Master YJ. 三百一十二 Hi, Master Sulen. 三百一十六 Hi, Master Chief Wang. 三百二十二 One member of the song. 三百二十八 Keep Sulen Pian. 三百三十 Master Wang as first. 三百三十五 Chapter 八 Southern and Gradual. 三百三十七 Hipshot Chapter 一三百五十四 Hipshot Way. 三百六十三 Difficult Questions. 三百六十九 Chapter 九 Proclamations. 三百七十一 Chapter X Final Instructions. 三百七十九 General Index. 四百三十一 People and Places Index. 四百四十一 The Eight Guidelines of BTTS. The Eight Guidelines of the Buddhist Text Translation Society. E. A volunteer must free himself herself from the motives of personal fame and profit. E. A volunteer must cultivate a respectful and sincere. Attitude free from arrogance and conceit. Seven. A volunteer must refrain from aggrandizing his or work and denigrating that of others. Four. A volunteer must not establish himself as the Standard of correctness and suppress the work of others with his or her fault. Finding who a volunteer must take the Buddha mind as his 斜线 her own mind. Five. A volunteer must use the wisdom of Dharma. Selecting vision to determine true principles. Seven. A volunteer must request virtuous elders in the ten directions to certify his 斜线 her translations. Eight. A volunteer must endeavor to propagate the teachings by printing sutras. Shastra texts and the Vedas. Texts when the translations are certified as being correct. 
Happily, dwelling conduct. Happily, dwelling conduct is the Bodhisattva conduct. And the Bodhisattva conduct is itself the happy. Dwelling conduct. One happily dwells in the doors of practice cultivated by Bodhisattvas. Both one as body and one as mind reside in the states of cultivation of the Bodhisattva way and do so happily, since that is what one likes to do. She Editor as introduction. The sixth patriarch as Dharma Jiro platform sutra is the fundamental text of chapter and Buddhism. It relates the life and teachings of Master Wen and the Great Master the Sixth. Patriarch as sat down by one of his disciples during the seventh and eighth centuries under the King and Dynasty. Master Wen Men taught the doctrines of no firm and of sudden enlightenment, which, as expounded in this text, continue to be the heart of chapter and wherever it is practiced. As such, these are the only teachings of a Chinese time one which are regarded by Buddhists as a sutra, that is, as a sacred text equal to those compiled by the earlier South Asian masters. Interest in Buddhism in general and in chapter and in particular is now swiftly growing in the West, especially in America. Translations and re-translations of many of the central Buddhist texts have been appearing in consequence. A good deal of Confusion has been an unfortunate product because chapter and is so foreign to traditional Western thought. The rendering of chapter and teachings into a Western language requires, even in the most literal translation, the virtual invention of a new vocabulary of concepts, and each new translation has tended to present a distinctly different rendition of the central Buddhist ideas. To elucidate the commentaries are often added by the translators. But all of these translations and commentaries have been written by scholars who are not Buddhists. Why that kind of now membership is hardly important to a translator of ordinary. She er philosophical writings, it becomes a severe stumbling block for the translator of chapter and teachings for chapter and is not a system of thought at all but a special kind of moral and psychological work and at a particular personal transformation which the Buddhists call enlightenment only one who through difficult Practice has undergone that transformation can hold to teach chapter and authoritatively and translate and comment on the sayings of other masters without having to resort to guesswork about 
What the sayings mean? Fortunately for students of the way, an effort to establish an authoritative Buddhist canon in English has now been undertaken by Trin P. Tonkam Master Student Wai and his American disciples. Master Hua stands in the direct line of Orthodox Buddhist leadership as it has been handed down from the time of Sheikh Gongyuni Buddha. The present translation of the sixth patriarch as Sutra here, presented in its second edition, was the first work of Master Hua. To appear in America, the first edition appeared in 1971. The translation itself was carried out under the master as supervision by the Buddhist Text Translation Society, composed of the master as disciples who are scholars both of the Chinese language and of Buddhism. With his Western readers in mind, the Master has provided a running commentary to the Sutra text. The commentary was first spoken in a series of lectures in 1969. The Master, as short and witty manner of making the most difficult concepts plain, already well known to Buddhists on both sides of the Pacific, has been rendered in English by his disciples with an eye to retaining the lively spoken style of the original. In his commentary, Master Hua as method is to read a few lines from the Sutra text and then expound upon their meaning, or expand on the doctrines in question, often by reference to Shisan, contemporary American problems. This style of exposition follows the tradition of lecturing sutras that has existed in China for many centuries until the appearance of this volume in its first edition there had been in the West little or no record or even description of the verbal teachings of Buddhism. The present volume serves as a rare example of Buddhism in action as it has survived intact through the centuries. You can cite Kakuo Jorong's Buddhist Text Translation Society San Francisco, 1977-14 Biography of the Venerable Master Discovering and perfecting the method to extricate living beings From the most fundamental problem of human existence that of Birth and death has been the primary focus of the venerable. Master Sun Wat as life. On the 16th day of the third lunar month in 1908, his mother saw Amitabha Buddha emitting a light when she illumined the entire world, and when she awoke from this dream, she gave birth to the Venerable Master. A rare fragrance lingered in the room following her dream and throughout the birth. The Master, as the initial awareness of that can at 11 years old when he saw a lifeless infant, 
the realization that that's it. First follow upon one another without cease in that post three. Suffering, pain and sorrow, awaken they profound sense of compassion in the master and profit is immediate. Resolution to leave the home by Amber to bring an end to the cycle of birth and death. He honored his mother as wishes that he remains at home to serve his parents until their deaths. However, the following year on Wang Yin Bodhisattva, as birthday, he dreamed that an old woman wearing a patchwork robe and a stream of beads appeared to guide him through a wilderness in which he was lost. She radiated compassion as she led him over. The road which was studded with deep and dangerous holes. He knew that if he had tried to traverse this road alone it would have been difficult if not impossible to reach safety, but as she guided him, the road became smooth and safe and he could see clearly. Shi Wu in all directions. A hat was his home. Glancing back on the dangerous road, he saw many people following him on it. Young men and women, some and scholars. Who are those people? He asked, where did they come from and where are they going? They have affinities with you, she said, and they also want to go home. You must guide them well and show them the way so that you may all arrive at Nirvana. I have important work to do elsewhere, and so I shall leave you now, but soon we shall meet again. The master asked her then and where she lived. You will find out when you arrive home, she said. There is no need to ask so many questions. Suddenly she whirled around and disappeared. The master let the people safely home and walk. From his dream feeling extremely happy. During that same year he began going to his parents three times each, in the morning and evening twelve hours a day. Then he thought, the world is bigger than just my father and mother, and he began to go to the heavens, to the earth, to the Emperor and to his teachers as well. He also bowed to his master, even though he had not yet met him. The master knew that without the aid of a good knowing advisor, it is impossible to cultivate, and he felt that he would be his master soon. He also now to the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Pratakabuddhas, and Arhats, and to all the good people in the world to thank them. For at the good deeds they had done, he bowed on behalf of the people they had helped. Evil people are to be pitied, he thought, and he bowed for the asking that their karmic offenses might be lessened and that they might learn to repent and reform. When doing this, he thought of himself as the very worst offender. 
each day he thought of new people to bow for and soon he was going 837.16 times in the morning and 837.7 times in the evening, which took about three hours a day able. The master day, he let others see him up. He rose at four in the morning, washed his face, went outside, the taste of incense. And but, regardless of the weather, if there was snow on the ground, he would just stop in the snow. In the evening, long after, everyone was asleep, he went outside and bowed again. He practiced this way every day for six years. During these years his filial devotion became known far and wide and he was referred to as filial Sampai. Nor did his filial devotion end at the death of his parents. On the day his mother was buried, he remained behind after the ceremonies were completed to begin a three-year vigil beside her grave. Shortly after, he left his mother as grave long enough to go to three conditions temple at the infant stations out of Harbin to receive the Shamanura precepts from Great Master Chapter A. G. He then returned to his mother as Great and built a five foot, eight hut out of five inch sorghum box which cut out the wind and Ren but actually set up little distinction between inside and outside. He commenced to observe the custom of filial piety by watching over his mother as great for a period of three years. Clothed only in a red robe, he endured the bitter Manchurian Snow and blazing summer sun. He ate only one meal a day when there was food, and he simply did not eat if no food was offered to him. He never lay down to sleep. At the side of the grave, the master read many sutras. When he first read the Lotus Sutra, he jumped for joy. He felt it, recited it for seven days and seven nights, forgetting to sleep, forgetting to eat, until eventually blood flowed from his eyes and his vision did. Then he read the Shurakama Sutra. Thoroughly investigating the great Samadhi and quietly. 17. Cultivating it, the three stoppings, the three contemplations. Neither moving nor still. The master relates of this experience. I began to obtain a single minded profound stillness and penetrate the luminal state. When I read the Abhutan Saka, the enlightenment became boundless in its scope, indescribable in its magnificence, unsurpassed in its loftiness, and ineffable in its clarity. National Master Chapter in Yenze, Opening and disclosing the mysterious and subtle. Understanding and expanding the mind and its states. 
exposing the principle while following the nature. Penetrating the result which includes the cause. The end white and interviews. Fast and great and totally complete. It is certainly so. It is certainly so. At that time I could not put down the text and bow to and recited the Great Sutra as if it were clothing from which one must not part or food which one could not do without for even a bit. And I bow to myself to see to its fast circulation. When his filial duties were completed, the master went into seclusion in Amritaha came in the mountain seas of his home. Ta. There he fell deeply into piano meditation and practiced rigorous asceticism, eating only pine nuts and drinking spring water. The area abounded with wild beasts, but they never disturbed the master. In fact, wolves and bears behaved like house pets, tigers stopped to listen to his teaching, and wild birds gathered to hear the wonderful Dharma. After his stay in the mountains, the master returned to three conditions monastery where he held the venerable master. Shiba Chapter N Chi and the Venerable Master Chapter N Gen to Great Expect the monastery while simultaneously devoting his time to the propagation of the Dharma. For more than three decades in Manchuria, the Master adhered strictly to ascetic contemplation, diligently practiced Pyona meditation, and worked tirelessly for the expansion and propagation of the Dharma. During those years, he visited many of the local Buddhist monasteries, attending intensive meditation and recitation sessions, and walked many miles to listen to lectures on the sutras, in addition to lecturing on the sutras himself. He also visited various non-Buddhist religious establishments and obtained a thorough grounding in the range of their specific beliefs. In 1946, the master made a major pilgrimage which took him to P.U.D. Old Mountain to receive the complete precepts in 1947. Then in 1948, after 3,000 miles of travel, the master went to Nan Wang Monastery and now before the venerable Master HSU. The 44th Patriarch from Shaikyo Muni Buddha. At that first meeting, the Venerable Master Yu, who was then 109 years old, recognized the Master to be a vessel worthy of the Dharma and capable of its propagation. He sealed and certified. The master, as spiritual skill and transmitted to him the wonderful might to mind seal of all of us. Thus the master became the 45th generation in a line descending from
from shape of Muni Buddha. The 19th generation in China from Bodhidharma and the 9th generation of the Wei Yan lineage. Of their meeting, the Master has written. The noble youth told me and said, Thus it is. I saw the noble youth and verified, Thus it is. The noble youth and act both thus. Universally, all that whole beings will also be thus. 19. The mind, to my transmission is performed apart from the appearance of the spoken word, apart from the mark of the written word, apart from the characteristic of the condition. Mind apart from all such appearances. Only sages who have Genuine realization understand it, ordinary people have no idea what is happening. It is a mutual recognition of the embodiment of the principle of true suchness. Nearly eight years later, in May of 1956, the Venerable Yu Sent to the Master a document entitled The Treasury of the Orthodox Dharma, the source of Buddhas and Patriarchs. The document bears the seals of Yu, Chu Monastery, and of the Venerable Yu. It serves as tangible and public certification of the transmission of the mind to mind seal from the venerable you to the master which took place during their initial meeting in 1948 in 1950 the master resigned his post at Nan Wang Monastery as the director of the Nan Wang Institute for the Study of the Fenea and journey to Hong Kong where he lived in a mountainside cave in the New Territories. He stayed in the cave until the large influx of some of members fleeing the mainland required his help in establishing new monasteries and temples throughout Hong Kong. He personally established two temples and a lecture hall and helped to bring about the construction of many others. He dwelt in Hong Kong for 12 years during which many people were influenced by his arduous cultivation. An awesome manner to take refuge with the Triple Jewel. Cultivating the Dharma, door of recitation of the Buddha as men. And to support the propagation of the Buddha Dharma. In 1962, the master carried the Buddha as Dharma then. Farther back to the shores of America where he took up residence. In San Francisco, sat in meditation and waited for past causes to ripen and bear their fruit. In the beginning of the year 1968, XX Master declared that the flower of Buddhism would bloom that year in America with five petals. In the summer of that year, the Master conducted the Shurikama Sutra Dharma Assembly which lasted 96 days five of the people who attended that session left the home life and became pictures and hit 
Distribution of heat. Under the faster and slightest. Things have time more than 20. People have left the whole life under his guidance. Since 1968, the master has delivered complete commentaries. On the Heart Sutra, the Diamond Sutra, the Sixth Patriarch, S. Sutra, the Omnitama Sutra, the Sutra of the Past House Authors, Store Bodhisattva, the Great Compassion Heart Karoni Sutra, the Dharma Flower Sutra, the Sutra in 42 sections, the Sermon Rapanaya and others. In June of 1971, the Master commenced a Dharma assembly on the King of Sutras, the Apodens Sakha. With such tireless vigor, the Master has firmly planted the roots of Dharma in Western soil so that it can become self perpetuating He has spent many hours every day explaining the teachings and their application to cultivation, steeping his disciples in the nectar of Dharma that they might carry on the Buddha as teachings. The miraculous events that have taken place in the Master as life are far too numerous to relate in this brief sketch. This is but a brief outline of how the Master has worked with selfless devotion to lay the foundation of the Buddha as teaching on Western soil. XXI. Tripi Pakam Master, what as introduction? All of the sutras are guides to use in cultivating the way. They may be spoken by the Buddhas, the Bodhisattvas, the Patriarchs, and also by Arhats, transformation beings, and gods. Although they all serve the same purpose, the doctrines within them differ. The sutras spoken by the Buddha were translated from the Indian languages into Chinese, and thus worked their way into Chinese society. In China, then, all the sutras are translations. With the sole exception of this present work, the sixth Patriarch S. Sutra, which was spoken by the great Chinese Master, the sixth Patriarch. The great Master was originally an illiterate peasant. When he heard the sentence of the Vajra, Diamond Sutra which said, one should produce that thought, which is nowhere supported, he experienced an awakening and went to Huang Mei to draw near to the fifth patriarch, the great Master Hang Zhen. The fifth patriarch transmitted to him the wonderful Dharma using the mind to seal the mind, which has been handed down in unbroken patriarchal succession. The sixth patriarch inherited this mind, sealed dharma, for and proceeded to carry out the wisdom life of the Buddha in his speaking of the sixth patriarch, as Sutra. Now, it has been translated into English and the white seal. Dharma, door of the Buddha has 
thereby being transmitted in perpetuity to the West. It is hoped that Westerners will now read, recite, and study it, and all become Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and Xiexian. XXI or Patriarchs. This is the main objective of this translation. May O who see and hear you quickly accomplish the Buddha way. Wherever this sutra is transmitted, the Orthodox Dharma may be found right in that place, causing living beings quickly to accomplish Buddhahood, such is the importance of this new translation. The sutra is indeed a treasure trove, it is the true body of the Buddha the compassionate father and mother of all living beings. It can give rise to limitless Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and Patriarchs. May all in the West who now read this Sutra realize fully and accomplish the Buddha way. The sutras contain the precious wisdom of the Buddha. There are some, let us call them, garbage eating scholars who claim that the Shuri Brahma Sutra was not spoken by the Buddha. This is most certainly not the case, and I have made the Following up, if the Shri Brahma Sutra is false, I will fall into the uninterrupted house forever. Chapter Empire Shenzhen, San Francisco, August 1977. XXII. Translator as introduction. This is the second edition of the first commentary to the sixth. Patriarch as Dharma Jiro platform sutra ever to express the essence of the sixth Patriarch as heart. Since the time the great master spoke this sutra, no other commentary has revealed his Basic principles, the Dharma of his heart. Tripitaka Master. Soon one as commentary unfolds the heart Dharma, the mind. Seal before the reader. If you wish to understand the wonderful meaning of this, Sutra, you should study this commentary, for within it are set forth the limitless, inexhaustible, profound principles of the Buddha Dharma. Among Western and Eastern peoples it is the flower of wisdom, the real fruit of Bodhi. Furthermore, this translation has been prepared by the Buddhist Text Translation Society of the Sino-American Buddhist Association. Each of its members, Pikshin, Pikshin means Yupus A.K.S., Yupus I.K.S., many of whom hold Master S and Dr. S. Degrees have read the manuscript with care over a period of several years to ensure its accuracy. Essentially, the mind still cannot be spoken or expressed in writing, but in his commentary the Master has done just that. Using numerous analogies and expedient devices to cause people to understand what they have never understood.
Wars should be fought. Should people come faster? What was born in northern China and after? His mother, as said, he practiced the Leo Pai by sitting beside her. Great for a period of three years. He built a small grass hut to XXI. Keep out the wind and rain, and sat there in meditation. If food was brought to him, he ate. If no food was brought, he did not. The master later traveled south to Canton, where he was appointed by the venerable master HSUU to serve as head of the Phanea Academy at Nan Wang Monastery, the temple of the Sixth Patriarch. He later received in transmission the Dharma of Master HSUU and became his Dharma successor. Since arriving in America, the Master has turned the great Dharma wheel, lecturing on such sutras as the Shurimama Sutra, the Lotus Sutra, the Earth or Bodhisattva Sutra, the Phaedra Sutra, and the Heart Sutra, and others. He teaches an ever-growing number of American disciples, many of whom have left home to become Hipshus and Hipshunis. In San Francisco, the Master has founded Gold Mountain Monastery where he is lecturing on the Abhutan Saka Sutra. He has also founded the International Institute for the Translation of Buddhist Texts. He has made the solemn vow that wherever he goes the Orthodox Dharma will prevail and the Dharma ending. H. shall not say it. Most recently, the Master established the city of 10,000 Buddhas near Talmadge, California, and has Complex of 237 acres and 60 buildings to serve as a center of world Buddhism. The city of 10,000 Buddhas now holds Dharma Well Buddhist University, of which the master is president and soon to be established on many programs to benefit living beings in many ways. The Master upholds firmly the Orthodox Dharma, for the Dharma he teaches proceeds from the red and authoritative transmission, and he works unceasingly for the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. This lively commentary constitutes the first authentic transmission to the west of the white seal of all Buddhas which has passed in unbroken patriarchal succession from Shaikha Muni Buddha to the present day. We present this XXP. Volume as the foundation for the flourishing of the Buddha Dharma in the West. Kitchenai Henry Buddhist Text Translation Society Xian Ko Chairperson Primary Translation Committee International Institute for the Translation of Buddhist Text San Francisco, August 1977 XXVI Reviewer, as preface
when the fifth patriarch transmitted the Dharma to the sixth patriarch, he said to him, Do not speak too soon, for the Buddha Dharma arises from difficulty. Centuries later in northern China, Tripitaka come Master Sudan. What then known as filial sampai was practicing filial piety. He cultivated and meditated for three years beside his mother as gray. His only protection from the northern whites and men was a five foot square hut made from stalks of sorghum gum. Together in an a friend which left both hands exposed to the elements. One time while cultivating there a miracle happened. Fully, some I saw the great master the sixth patriarch come to his hut. He entered through one of the openings and talked to the filial. Some just like an ordinary person. Filio some type of that he was real, forgetting at that time that the great master had entered Nirvana over a thousand years ago. The sixth patriarch said to the filio son, In the future you can go to America. You will meet this person and that person. Five schools will divide into ten to teach and transform living beings. Ten will become a hundred. A hundred will become a thousand. And so forth to endless, endless numbers. XXVII in abundance, abundance, abundance. Endless abundance numbers incalculable. As grains of sand in the river Ganges. This marks the true beginning of the proper Dharma in the West. After they had talked, when the great master moved to me, the filial son rose to escort him. They walked together a few steps and suddenly the sixth patriarch was gone. It was then that filial son I realized, oh, the sixth patriarch entered Nirvana hundreds of years ago, but nonetheless, I met him today. Several decades after this miracle, following years of difficulty and hard cultivation in a cold and tiny temple in San Francisco as Chinatown, Tripitaka Master Sun Wabigan, transmitting the Dharma of the mind seal of all patriarchs. He continues to do so every day. Those who recognize him listen to it, consider it, and cultivate it. In this commentary on the sixth patriarch as Sutra the Master says, you will succeed only if you do not fear suffering. The Buddha Dharma arises from difficulty, the more difficult, the better. So now you must endure suffering. This is difficult, but you can do it, for it is the opening of your wisdom. Kikshanai Hand Chapter IH Buddhist Text Translation Society Xie Xian Tong, Chairperson Primary Translation Committee 
International Institute for the Translation of Buddhist Texts. San Francisco, August 1977. XXIX. NAN WU Original Teachers of Human Buddha. Triple X. 28 Patriarchia Bodhi Dharma. The first Patriarch in China. XXXI. 29 Patriarch Great Master Wei K.O. The second Patriarch in China. XXXI. 30th Patriarch Great Master Sen T.S. The third Patriarch in China. XXXII. Thirty first Patriarch Great Master Top HSIN. The fourth Patriarch in China. XXXI. Thirty second Patriarch Great Master Top Gen. The fifth Patriarch in China. XXXV. Thirty. Third Patriarch Great Master Wei Nen. The Sixth Patriarch in China. First for opening a sutra. The unsurpassed, proud, and wonderful Dharma is difficult to encounter in hundreds of millions of years. I now see and hear it, receive and uphold it. And I found to fathom the Tathagata as true meaning. E. Forward. The sixth patriarch as Dharmajiro platform sutra has been. Explained in America before, but I do not know how well it has. Been done. Some lecturers simply read the text aloud and since each sutra has its own special interpretation, merely reading it aloud does not reveal the meaning. The Buddha Dharma flourish in China, but only the teachings of the sixth patriarch, the literate patriarch, were made into a sutra. It was recorded by the Master as disciple Fah Haidu. Although his transcription may not mirror the Patriarch as exact words, the meanings expressed are correct. I hope that everyone will study the Buddha Dharma with his true mind and not hold the opinion that it is very easy. It is only by regarding the Buddha Dharma as extremely important that you will be able to comprehend the principles which I explain. E. Dharma Master Fahai was a root entering disciple of the sixth patriarch. That means that the sixth patriarch had transmitted the wonderful mind seal Dharma to him and he was therefore privileged to enter the patriarch as he said. Introduction The sixth patriarch as Dharma Jewel platform is the specific title.